exquisite cooking, and harmonizing yoga. Join us as we take the next 30 days to discover a whole new way of living. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at self-supported assists. Generally, we could probably divide assists into three forms. You have assists from an individual, so someone helping you into a posture. You have uh, props assists, in which we're using things like straps and blocks. And then we have self-assists, in which we're using our own body in order to move deeper into the stretch. So we'll look at a few example postures, and then maybe in the future move into some other variations. So these are great to help relax muscles in the body. They're really nice in the evening, just before you go to bed, to give the body one last stretch. And they're also good after a few dynamic warm-ups. So to begin, we're just gonna warm up the body briefly. With a gentle head rotation. We'll just go through each of the part of the bodies we're gonna work with. Each of the parts of the body that we're gonna work with. And go in the opposite direction with the rotation. All right, then we'll move into the shoulders. Opposite direction. Then we'll move into the hips, gently warming them up by swinging them around. Opposite direction. Okay, Asutanasana with Parastasana. Inhale, reach up. Stretch. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up. Exhale, neutral. Inhale again, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to neutral. Exhale, release, a few more. So the first assisted stretch we'll do is for the neck. We're just gonna lower the left ear towards the left shoulder and then bring the left hand to the outside of the right side of the head. Then gently begin to apply pressure. Try to keep the right shoulder down, which is going to give additional stretch and length through the side, the right side of the neck. So we're just working until we find the stretch. You might need to adjust the hands a little bit, moving it towards more towards the crown of the head or towards the forehead. And then you can also slightly adjust the position of the head, forward or back, until you find a good stretch through the side of the neck. We're just going to hold here, allow the muscles to release deeply into the stretch, especially the ones in the neck. You can relax in the stretch, which means not forming any tension through the neck, which will then help to deepen the stretch. Alright, now we'll release. Just gently rock the head from side to side to relax the muscles. And then we'll go to the opposite side. Again, support the head. Softly draw it down towards the right side this time while lengthening out through the left side of the neck. Then release. We could do more with the neck, but we're going to focus on all the parts of the body, or at least some of the major joints. The next we're going to come into is the forearms. So for the forearms, you're just going to wrap the hand around the opposite hand. So now I'm grabbing my right hand with my left. The left fingers wrap around the back side of the hand while the thumb comes to the palm of the right hand and then 
keeping the right hand as flat as I can, I'm just going to apply pressure to the back side of the hand with the left until I find the stretch of the uh, hand extensor muscles which are on the back side of the forearm, so the posterior side of the forearm. And then release, we'll go to the opposite hand. Then release. Now we're going to grasp on the pinky side of the hand. And, and then I begin to draw the back of the hand in towards the body. So this is stretching the uh, interior side now of the forearm. Fingers are pressing into the palm. The thumb is just behind the wrists, which is going to help reinforce the stretch. Then release. Come into the opposite hand. and then release. Now for a supported upper back and shoulder stretch, slightly lean forward and then pull. I'm gonna do the right shoulder and upper back first. I'm gonna pull out to the left with the support of the left hand. So the left hand is pulling from the wrist to the right, out to the left until I find extension through the muscles that surround the shoulder blades. So pull and extend. Try not to allow this pull to pull the whole upper body. Instead, allow the pull to stretch the inner muscles just along the spine. So it's almost like you're reaching out to grab an object. And we'll do the opposite side. You might need to make adjustments with your body until you find the stretch. Everyone's body is completely different not completely, but is quite unique from one another. And your flexibility might be more or less than mine, which means that the stretch might need to be adjusted. You might need to find your own modification until you find the stretch. Now release. We'll go into a different area of the shoulder now. Same idea, but this time we're going to grasp the wrist. Same manner, so we're grasping the wrist from the back side. I'm grasping the right wrist with my left. And then I'm going to try to pull the arm out to the side. This is going to stretch the armpit of the right arm. Another way to grasp is go palm to palm. So my left hand is drawing my right hand out to the left side. Same idea, opposite side. And release. Now we'll move into the legs. For the legs, we'll do the hips first to open up the hips. You have two options for the next posture. Essentially we're going to be cradling the leg like a baby and then hug it in towards the body. Pull the uh, in, inner side of the calf towards the body drawing it towards the heart. If you're more flexible, then this variation isn't going to work best for you. Instead, you're going to lower all the way onto your back. Do the same thing while keeping that left leg planted on the ground and then creating, cradling the leg in towards the body. The more you keep that knee bent at a 90 degree angle, the more difficult to stretch. Whereas if the heel is really in close to the groin, then it's going to be easier to move the leg in towards the body. So you can adjust according to the degree of your own flexibility. Then we can release this leg. We'll do the same for the opposite leg. I'll do it seated upright this time. If you find that you're getting a muscle cramp from holding, then you can just softly rock 
side to side. This will help to relieve the tension that's in the muscle as the pressure is displaced between the uh, outer, middle, and inner sides of the muscles in the hip joint. Then we'll release the left leg. Now you can hold each of these stretches up to 30 seconds or more, but only increase the length of the time once you feel like you're really comfortable with the stretches. If you rush it, then you're gonna get muscle spasms, muscle cramps, and even uh, hyperextension of the muscles, so just be gentle. Finally, we'll stretch the hamstrings by coming onto the back, keeping the legs straight, and then just raise the leg towards the sky, and then you're just gonna grasp the back side of the leg. If you're less flexible, then you're just gonna be reaching for the back side of the thigh. If you're more flexible, then towards the calf, or even to the heel, if you can get there without lifting the left leg off the ground, and without raising your shoulders off the earth. So this assist should be very easy. People have a tendency of bending the elbows, keep the elbows straight, and then move your hands down according to uh, the amount of flexibility you have in the hamstrings. But the arms are straight, shoulders on the earth, opposite leg on the ground. Ankle flex at a 90 degree angle. So don't point the toes, keep the ankle flexed, pressing through the heel, drawing the leg in towards the body. I'll do the same opposite side. So now into the left leg. Again, less flexible, hand on the back of the thighs. Never go behind the knees because that just compromises the stretch and also puts unnecessary strain on the knee joint. Then release. I'll just demonstrate one more so you get an idea of some of the postures we have available to us. The next is just a spinal twist, so Udhra Karjanasana. And we're going to bend the right knee so that the foot's on the ground just inside the left. Then lift the hips off the ground and just move them a little bit to the right. This will help create good alignment through the spine. Now we're going to roll to the outside of the left leg. Keep the right arm extended out to the right. And then press that knee in towards the earth, the right knee, outside the left side body. And then you're just going to look all the way over to your right hand. Now, uh, one variation you can do here if you're more flexible and you've gotten your knee all the way to the ground, then resist the knee into the hand, which is going to deepen the stretch of the muscles within the spinal column. But this is going to be more intense, so if you're not ready for that, then don't go for it. We'll go to the opposite side. We're coming back to center, putting the hips to center, then straightening the leg, then bending the left uh, knee, and going out to the opposite side. Oops, sorry, offset the hips first to the left, then drop the hips, the knee out to the right, and roll to the outside of the right leg, while you look out towards the left fingertips. and then release, come in neutral, and relax. So that's a demonstration of self-assisted yoga postures. There's many more in that field of physical activity, but hopefully that will give you an idea of where to get started. Thanks again for watching, namaste.